Hey guys, so I decided to try and follow up with the Breeders' Cup profiles by making a Breeders' Cup analysis video. You know, to show off what has happened with the now official post positions and now everything being set up. So, let's start with the Breeders' Cup Classic. So first up, we got the longest shot in the field, Math Wizard. And even Math Wizard has something worth, since he made a surprise victory in the Pennsylvania Derby with a late flying close. However, in my opinion, I think there are a lot of problems with this race. Mainly that it was a race with not that many horses, so navigating around all this and making another late close seems rather unlikely. And, obviously, the switch from three-year-old runners to four-year-old horses is going to be a very drastic change, even for a newfound grade one winner. Seeking the Soul is a horse that I kind of liked at the beginning, but he has really began to underwhelm me as he finished off the board twice, especially with such a lackluster performance in the Awesome Again behind three other Breeders' Cup runners. It, it, it's just not a good image, and I'm not surprised that he's 20-1. to 1. Owen Dale is another horse that I think is a very strong pass. Sure, he might have a late-closing kick that could help if he wants to rack off some horses late in the race, but Owen Deal's a three-year-old, and his successes in grade one company have been a third in the Preakness Stakes, which had a lot of early fast pace, and a fifth in the Traverse Stakes. So I wouldn't say his experiences in grade one company are particularly great, and he's more of a horse who likes to win in lower races, like grade three races, like he most recently did in the Oklahoma Derby. He isn't a Breeders' Cup horse, and that's why I think he's a very hard toss. Similarly, there's War of Will, who has really began to disappoint with such underwhelming performances. But a third in the Pennsylvania Derby isn't particularly bad, although it was behind Math Wizard. Now, although he is far from the success he had in the Preakness Stakes, where he got a really good trip right behind the fast pace behind Warrior's Charge, waited for him to tie Robs, snuck up on the rail, and went on to win... War of Will does now have a new trick up his sleeve with blinkers, which could help him with focus, as Mark Cassie has said that he was rather unfocused in the Pennsylvania Derby. But, at the same time, how much of a difference is blinkers going to make? Sure, he'll have more focus, but it's not like it's going to turn him into Secretariat or something. Yoshida, being 8-1, to one, is another toss for me. I don't think he deserves those odds, because, sure, he was second in the Whitney, but he was and also third in the Woodward Stakes, but he's a horse who likes Saratoga, and he hasn't proven himself in the East Coast. But I do know that he's a horse who does tend to do better at certain tracks and not as good in others. Like, he's a good horse at Churchill Downs and Saratoga, but other tracks he tends to not do as well. So I don't really have a good feeling he's going to transform his best performance in the Santa Anita track. But you never know. Maybe Santa Anita's a track you like. There's a small chance. Then there's a late. A late is a very surprising choice. As for most of this year, she's been in the shadow of Midnight Bizu. Now she's escaping the shadow and is going to deal with ten other boys. A very arduous task for a mare. But a late does have a one advantage in this race that she would not have had if she ran the distaff. She's a lover of the mile and a quarter, winning at the mile and a quarter at least three times, and I don't think she's ever lost at a mile and a quarter. I mean, she won the Alabama Stakes, she won the Delaware Handicap twice, so she really does like the mile and a quarter over the shorter mile and an eighth, which is where she lost to Midnight Bizu. So, the distance change could be a really good fit for her, but at the same time, this is a late we're talking about, and horses as great as Aziri have tried and failed to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. So, even though on paper running at a mile and a quarter over a mile and an eighth is an improvement, she's facing off against elder horses, and not even great horses like Aziri can do it. And let's face it, is a late really as good as someone like Aziri? No. So I don't really think she deserves the 6-1 to odds. Sure, there might be a chance she could get a place or show bet, but... I am very doubtful, because I've only ever seen one mare ever do well in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And of course, that's Zenyatta. Now, then there's Higher Power. 
higher power, along with McKinsey and Mongolian Groom, which we're gonna see later, are horses that have regularly ran at Santa Anita, and because of that, they've met each other many a times, and they definitely do have quite the chemistry. Now, Higher Power made a surprise performance when he stalked right behind Quip and ran away with the win, with Mongolian Groom in third. But, in the awesome again, he stumbled out of the gate, meaning he couldn't get the same stalking position as before, giving Mongolian Groom the chance to take the lead, and with McKenzie's saddle slipping, Mongolian Groom took the win, and Higher Power couldn't really catch up with such a bad start. Now, with the distance back to a mile and a quarter, I think Higher Power might have a slight advantage over Mongolian Groom, because he was the one who won the mile and a quarter Pacific Classic. But, keep in mind, Mongolian Groom beat McKinsey, and Higher Power didn't. As well as that, we're just gonna have to hope that Higher Power doesn't stumble out of the gate this time. But I think if he doesn't, he actually has a I think he has a decent chance of doing just as well as he did in the Pacific Classic, stalking right behind the front runners and running on to win. But that's just a hope. Number eight in McKinsey. Now, I've watched McKinsey a lot, and I've hoped that he has won a lot of times throughout this year, but he has disappointed me a lot of times. He's only ever won the Whitney handicap, and every other time he always has some sort of excuse. Metropolitan handicap, bad trip. Saddle slips and the awesome again stakes. You know, he's just a really bad luck horse, or he's just not that good. I don't think McKinsey's a Breeders' Cup Classic winner. Like, unless everything goes his way, I think that he's just gonna have to settle for second or third, like he is always. So I'd say that he's a good placer show bet, but relying on him to win, while on paper sounds like a good idea, it really isn't. Then there's Mongolian Groom. Now, Mongolian Groom had a wrench thrown into his race recently with a much slower 1 minute 2 workout recently and having his trainer not really be impressed by this. While that is concerning to have an underwhelming workout towards the Breeders' Cup, he did really have a- he kind of had a reason with the saddle slipping back on him, causing him to slow down. As long as it doesn't happen again, it's pretty reasonable to say that he's still in good condition. And, if he manages to go to the front, he might have a good chance of going gate to wire, unless higher power stalks him and can potentially wear him down. But, Besides that, though, I think Mongolian Groom does, is a well-deserving 12-to-1 because, well, that workout always throws a wrench in things, and he got rather lucky in the Awesome Against stakes with higher power out of contention due to stumbling and McKenzie having his saddle slipping. I don't think he's going to have that kind of luck with 11 horses. And then there's Vino Rosso and Code of Honor. Both of these horses I like a lot. I think that they are very good win bets. Vino Rosso, being a horse who won the Hollywood Gold Cup this year over Giftbox, who defeated McKenzie, which is a good sign that he already likes Santa Anita. So that is completely just like, forget that, we already know that Vino Rosso has talent over there. Now, as well as that, he's very consistent. Third in the Whitney Handicap and second in the Chucky Club Gold Cup through disqualification. So he's very consistent and is a great play show or even win bet. And I think he has the potential to repeat the Gold Cup at Santa Anita. And then there's Code of Honor, who's very similar to Vino Rosso and even managed to beat him in the Jockey Club Gold Cup through disqualification. And I think out of all the three-year-olds, Code of Honor is easily the best. Never worse than third this year, He's been doing great all year, and I think this is his chance to win. He definitely has a shot to win this race. But if you want to go safe, again, play show bet. Although I do think Vino Rose was slightly better, I think that both of them are about equally good. And I think I, you can bet on both of them and have similar amounts of success. But that's just my opinion. That's all the horses for the Breeders' Cup Classic this year. If you agree with me, then, well... Cool. And if you don't, then explain who you think is going to win. For me, I think the three horses that have a great chance of winning are Higher Power, Vino Rosso, and Code of Honor. I'm kind of I'm going to lean towards Vino Rosso to win with place bets for Higher Power and Code of Honor. And yeah, I think that's my bet for the Breeders' Cup this year. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to do analyses on other verse races, then tell me, and I might do them, but I cannot do guarantee it this time. See you guys next time. Bye.